Hello, it's uh, Dave Herman, alias Daz. I'm going to record a little bit of my working on my art here. So I'm at the standing desk, as you can see. I finally figured out the way to work this thing so it's usable to draw and everything like that. It's pretty cool. I mean, I get a fancy tablet. I'm using my, uh, my Wacom uh, just Intuos Pro, the little slate, and I've got my monitor. Um, in front of me. So here we go. This is a design I did in my 10 minute sketches, you know, my daily sketches uh, throughout the year of 2017. And then this might have been like a three session one, 30 minutes. I've started to uh, make this into a mouse pad. So uh, in pads where they don't exactly fit and all that, to the dimensions of the pads, because I'm just whipping these off, never thought I'd ever have any future use for them or what I was going to do, to be honest, just being a spontaneous artist at the time. Um, I'm adding uh, bands on top and bat bottom, or I'll, um, you know, I could expand out the black and draw on it and stuff, but you know what, I'm trying to like use it like a found object. So like if I found a cigarette lighter in the street and was working it into a sculpture or something, you know, that's what I'm doing with my pictures, like, oh. I found this on the laptop. What can I do with it? So you get to watch me. Uh, I'm just, it's a very strange robotic arm, uh, you know, not properly portioned or anything, but um, a biogenetic experimental device or something that some critter's working on. <laughs> and so uh, I've, you know, Re, what do you call it? Uh, I'm re reappropriating it. I'm, I'm using it for a different use than the daily sketch. I'm going to use it to actually make a mouse pad. Should be a badass mouse pad. Should be very cool. So I will try and sell this. I thought I'd start combining <clears throat> my conversions to mouse pads um, with the daily sketch. There's so many things I work on. That when I wake up, it's almost like a trauma for me where to start now. There's just too much art sitting around in folders and finished and unfinished and not used. And, you know, all this stuff needs to find an application. <clears throat> so, that's what I intend to do. You know, I've sold two mouse pads, thank God. <laughs> you know, these are just things I'm trying to do to make a living as an artist. If anyone wants to donate, feel free. Um, so we're moving this little box over here. Should go over there. There we go. Get over there. Yeah. And that's working on the color. So what I do is, you know, when I rough these out, they could be flat. Could be. This looks like, you know, uh, a transparent type of uh, plastic glass or something here, uh, or other material that's a hybrid that is yet to be invented, and other things, and knobs, and sensors, and stuff, you know, experimental. Just trying to make a cool visual image, um, combining these elements, and then just doing something on my own, you know, like I usually do, just uh, kind of wing it. Because too much thinking. I mean, it's not like as much fun for me. I like to think, but I like to think about things that I didn't know I was going to think about. Whereas if it was a commission, you know, somebody could hire me for a commission. I would like a commission. Um, then I would be thinking about it in the terms of my client. So there's, see, there's like a color I didn't like. I just undo it right here and uh, so say this blue was going up the arm you say well how could this happen well it could be like a t-shape coming across you know going through the other side like a piston or a t-bar or something you know I think of weird things and then I you know did all these sketches and lines so now I'm using them sort of like to break it up into different planes so this transparent plate is like in front of this transparent plate and uh, I'm not going to put like 
infinite hours into these things, but I'm going to just spruce them up a little bit in a more finished way to make elegant mouse pads of, you know, fine art, or maybe they're not elegant, I don't know. But they're mouse pads nonetheless. <laughs> and um, I really got excited when I sold my second one. The first one went to uh, a patron that, you know, has bought uh, fine art from me and been tattooed by me. And the second one, what was the second one now? Let me think. Oh, the second one went to uh, a random person that came in here yesterday uh, to talk about designing a tattoo. We agreed on a tattoo and she came with her husband and they looked at my mouse pads and she found she liked. So <laughs> out of the possible five choices here, she found one. She liked the biomechanical robotic eye and that was sold. So uh, I will be making more of things as this system grows and I figure out how to get them out in front of people and people know I exist. And right now I just have that page on Facebook, which about 20 people have seen. But uh, what time? I don't know. You know, I just, I'm not good at marketing myself. I admit it. I was in advertising for a long time. And what I did is make people's ideas become realities. But they had huge budgets. <laughs> and we had a lot of resources at our disposal as a, just a guy, an individual artist. I do not have those resources at my disposal or the budget. So the things I was able to get done for, you know, Viper cars and Chrysler and Ford and General Motors and SPX Engineering and, uh, Kmart and Target and uh, marketing clothing and stuff like that. There were huge budgets, and uh, it was easier for me to get to the resources and, uh, you know, negotiate and do get things done. As a little guy, you know, <laughs> I got, like, zero clout. I got no way of manufacturing myself. People had pipelines and chains and distribution networks and so those were already established. If Chrysler wanted to push a product through something or uh, like that, you know, they had a way of getting it. It just needed to be cool. So that's where I come in. They design something. They'd say, "What do you think about this box?" And I'd say, "Well, you know, I think it would be more attractive if you did this, or if you use this font, or if you put this type of a picture there." And then my advertising agencies I worked with would uh, submit their designs to Chrysler as Chrysler approved vendors. And so I, you know, had my input that way. And, of course, I handled print production. So I did a lot of cool stuff in my day, in my day. You know, like I say, it was the big time of the automobile industry. And uh, that was a while ago. Now, I've been a tattoo artist for 20 years and uh, did a lot of fine art paintings, as I call them. Uh, so I've got about 40, you know, paintings that involve sacred geometry. A lot of them are figurative, involve nudes and uh, done from live models and things like that, which right now the world's in a flux about all that stuff, but... Uh, as far as the U.S., you know, in Europe or somewhere like that, they still understand art and nudity and the difference between uh, um, seeing the beauty in the female form and not trying to put any political connotations on it or some kind of weirdness. So I, since I'm not selling any figurative art these days, uh, because I'm a, I uh, am what they call, what I call, representational, not photorealistic. Uh, photorealistic seems to be working these days in other parts of the world. Uh, you know, I've spent a good 
five years trying to get this digital art using my skills, techniques, by finding the proper tools, of course, to use in digital art in the software to achieve what's in my mind. So now I'm able to play with them, the tools, and uh, navigate, sometimes do watercolors, sometimes do oil painting, sometimes do pencil, sometimes do Conti crayon chalk, whatever. Sometimes like this, I'm peeling back the skin, uh, this, you know, laboratory type created skin here just to reveal another layer and then something that's happening up here. I like to have lots of things that are happening. Things that are not easily explained, they're just going on and you have to make your own explanation for what you're seeing, which is totally cool to me. So uh, now to get that uh, a darker white, I'm going to raise the hardness, and I'm going to just press a little harder here. My airbrush, and bring this down the side like it's going to the side away from us, and then have it up here. In fact, I like it even in this side. Let's just wire that in. And maybe wire it in here. And wire it in here. You know, we don't know what these... The function of this thing is. It has some kind of a thumb there and some fingers. And uh, I'm just making this a little bit more interesting uh, as a mouse pad. And I'll go to pencil, and in pencil, you know, it's much harder than the airbrush. So you're like a mechanical pencil, or, a, you know, you're pressing very hard right there, like that. And uh, so if I go to mechanical, and then I hit it. And then to get darker, brush density, stabilize, hardness. Uh, I want the density to be there. And that should give me my white. Uh, building, building, building. Not so much liking that. So I'm going to uh, take black and just wipe that right now. Curve that right back into the thumb. There we go. Down to that color I have here. And fit that a little better with a shadow. The reveal of this layer. Yep, things are, you know, it's uh, this is how I kind of experiment and see what I've what I've got going underneath there. Yes, now, if I want that, uh, brush size, hardness, density, stabilization, hardness, let's go there, and let's, let's go white, <laughs> that would help, there we go. And then I'll take that down like that. Connect it here. And connect it here. Bring that into here. So this is uh, interesting. There we go. And, uh, you know, 
as you play with these different layers, you can achieve stuff. So that looks kind of flat. So we would edit that out and put the yellow in there, or orangey yellow, kind of something like this. See what we get. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I like the transparency I'm keeping. So now I would, um, let me go into the water cutter brush. See, I get that kind of a blend where you don't have that harsh edge. And it's, that's the fun of playing with these tools. I don't want to build this out too much, but now I want to come up over here and kind of morph that in to the whole of this. And then some kind of gadgetry in there, like that. And now I add a little black into that, like here and here. Yeah. And then I would pop a new layer, like that, and then come back. See, you get that when you come over that layer. Just about to call this video. Uh, 16 minutes. We'll go to even 20. And there we get that. And then this will brighten up a little. Like so. Add to that slot. And maybe come up into here. And then I need some highlight colors around that. Come with this one. Come back there. I'm going to put this in yellow. Run this down here. And put a little texture to it. Then I'm going to bring this one out and run it down like that and like that like that. Come over here now when I get something like that and I want to soften I go over here to these two dots these two raindrops and that's blur, blend. So I can soften that in just with the pressure of my brush kind of in there like that. And then soften these. And by soften, um, what I try and do is get rid of the beginning of a thing. All right? So you're saying, what is he doing? So, yeah, I see how, like, here you got that shape. I want that shape to just sort of morph into, disappear into the other colors and the other parts of the machine without um, being a radical change. Now, this slice would be cool with some blue. So I'll drop in some blue in there in uh, pencil mode. Right there, because I'm a mixed media guy. See, even though I'm using digital paint, right? I'm using it the way I would use traditional mixed media. I mean, I'm trying to train myself to think that way, right? So if I was painting this by hand, I said, you know, that needs a pencil technique there. Then I would pick up a pencil in the real world and do that. So now I've trained myself to find these objects in the software. And then I say, OK, I need a pencil. I need a brush with watercolor. I need an oil paint. And then I, I think it out that way. Now, for me, it's taken a long time, and I'm still working that. 
So I'm just giving you a hint into what I do. What's the thinking? My methodology for this stuff. Pencil. I need to be in pencil. And I need to be smaller. And I'm learning how to draw standing up again. So that's challenging. Oops, that line was too far. But that fits in there nice. See, now, just that one statement in this whole picture of that kind of a, it's like a purple, let's say, uh, lavender. Yeah, let's back that up again. I guess I'm liking it right there. So now I would take and blend this, and then we'll cut the video. So let me uh, go into blend. And I soften that edge right there that comes around and soften it right here. Uh, like I had a smudge stick or something, you know? And there we go. Then I got to save it. You got to always remember to save these buggers. So this is Da's mechanical iron preparation for a mouse pad. And that is correct. And I'm going to save it. Yes. I'm going to write right over what I had. And uh, the layer can't be maintained. You want to save it? I do. And there we go. So, oh, see you guys. Ciao.